Hey, I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter. Should we be consuming creatine to boost our brain health? In this video, we're going to be breaking down the latest research on creatine supplementation, what it may do for our brain health, who should be consuming creatine, whether there is risk for side effects in people with kidney disease, whether women should be consuming creatine, the amount of creatine that has been best studied to correlate with brain health, and the mechanism of action whereby creatine may boost brain health. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Austin Promoter. I'm a board certified internal medicine doctor. And for the last 10 years, I have been focused on making brain health accessible to millions of people around the world. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to my channel. That helps me to get more content to more people. With this all said, we're going to jump right into the topic and how creatine may boost brain function. Now, it's important to note that creatine is nothing new as it relates to the medical science. People have been talking about creatine for a long time, but by and large, we've been talking about creatine as it relates to exercise performance and to muscle health. So it's really only in the last 10 or so years that we've started to see so much buzz around whether creatine supplementation can boost our brain health. But like most things in supplementation, there can be a lot of uh, buzz and hype that isn't necessarily based in science. So in this video, we're gonna really explore what is the actual science around creatine supplementation, what is the best dose if a person chooses to consume creatine, and where might there be some consideration around populations that may be best served for brain health by taking creatine. The reason I'm doing this video is because there is so much buzz right now around creatine supplementation. And again, there's always some sort of story when there's a ton of buzz as it relates to how much is hype versus how much is science. I think creatine is actually very unique in this space because unlike most supplements, there's actually some solid science, both mechanism and human data suggesting that creatine supplementation is correlated with better brain health in healthy people. And that is fundamental to this conversation. We're not talking about people with a pre-existing disease state. We're saying that if healthy people consume creatine, data suggests brain benefits. But before we get into all of that, let's talk about what creatine actually is. Creatine is a compound. It's made up of carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. It was discovered in 1832, initially identified in muscle, and the vast majority of creatine in our bodies is found in our muscle. It is made from amino acids, in particular glycine, methionine, and arginine. And importantly, even though we have creatine in our bodies, supplementation can increase levels of creatine in our bodies by up to 50 fold or even more. The reason creatine became popular in the first place was not just that it was found in muscle, but they, uh, about 80 years after the discovery, Researchers at Harvard University were able to show that when people consumed creatine, there was an increase in creatine content in muscle, and that this creatine could actually help to create more energy, uh, looking at other mechanistic studies in the form of ATP. Now, this is essential to the conversation because mechanistically, the top contender for why creatine supplementation can boost brain health relates to the formation of ATP because creatine can help to regenerate ATP from ADP. In doing so, the putative mechanism is that it helps to enhance energy levels in the brain. And as we'll discuss in a moment as it relates to the research, some of the best data suggests that it's people with pre-existing uh, states related to lower energy in the brain that may benefit most from supplemental creatine. If we fast forward from kind of the earliest uh, 1900 years where creatine became popular in the research to the time where it actually became practical for human use, it was really around the 1990s where scientists started to discover that creatine supplementation uh, not only helped athletic performance, but that athletes started to make this practical, make this part of their routine. So in the 1990s, athletes were using creatine to enhance their athletic performance. And this kind of fueled an industry where high potency creatine became more the norm in athletics. Uh, I remember when I was in high school and college, which was already certainly uh, over a decade or two ago, this was a very popular supplement. So it has been around for a long time. And mechanistically here, we had seen that people who took creatine had improvements in multiple measures of muscle performance, as well as enhanced muscle recovery. This helps to support the fact that there are over a thousand peer reviewed studies on creatine, primarily as it relates to enhancing muscle performance, in part, again, 
because creatine helps to regenerate energy, ATP, which is the kind of core currency of energy within our cells, within our cells. Now, if we look at creatine in the brain, let's take this energy conversation and expand it and make it then more relevant to the brain. So if creatine helps to enhance energy throughout our bodies, not just in our muscles, how might that be specifically relevant to the brain? Our brains are about the most energy intensive part of our bodies. Even though they are only two to 3% of our weight, they use up around 20% of our body's energy. And so they're using a ton of glucose. They're going through a ton of glucose uh, relative to their weight. Now, many researchers are proposing that when the brain does not get access to consistent fuel, that it may actually suffer in terms of cognitive decline. And there are a number of uh, really detailed mechanistic papers on this subject, but the best data I would say is looking at cognitive impairment related to aging and Alzheimer's disease. In both of these cases, brain researchers can show that there is a decrease in the brain's ability to utilize glucose, which has helped researchers to kind of narrow in on the fact that consistent supply of energy to the brain seems essential for good brain function. So mechanistically here, creatine may help to increase energy within the brain and access to energy within the brain by regenerating ATP. And what we now know is that when people take oral creatine, not only does it increase levels of creatine within the brain, but it may help to counteract low energy subjective states like fatigue. And so research has shown in people who are sleep deprived, as well as people who are experiencing mental fatigue, that creatine supplementation may be beneficial. As we look at specific cognitive outcomes and creatine supplementation, I really want to make this point, which is that by and large, when we look at supplements, there's very little consistent data saying that in a healthy person, taking any supplement will enhance brain function consistently. So looking at multiple people in large data sets, but creatine, specifically creatine monohydrate, and we'll talk about the specific subtypes of creatine in a moment, creatine has actually been shown to correlate with better brain function across multiple studies of healthy people. In a 2022 meta-analysis, it was shown that creatine supplementation was linked to improved memory compared to placebo. This was especially relevant in people who were aged 66 to 77. That's relevant because these are also the people who may be starting to experience lower brain access to energy and cognitive decline. If we look at another uh, meta-analysis, a systematic review, in fact, of randomized trials that was published in 2018, the researchers showed that creatine supplementation may improve intelligence and reasoning abilities of healthy individuals. So we're seeing multiple data points suggesting that in healthy people, creatine supplementation may enhance brain function. Now, are there certain populations that may be better suited to benefit from creatine supplementation? One significant correlate to this is that creatine tends to come from higher kind of meat-rich diets. This is not saying that you should eat more meat to get more creatine necessarily, but it is saying that vegans and vegetarians may have more of a benefit derived from creatine supplementation. As I mentioned before, as far as subpopulations, it does seem like people who are under high levels of cognitive strain, for example, those who are sleep deprived, those who are under higher levels of metabolic stress in their brain, meaning that they're psychologically stressed out, um, these may be populations that could be at higher benefit from taking creatine supplementation. The reason, again, seems to be because creatine may help to regenerate ATP in the brain. So for people who are at a higher risk of maybe running low on brain energy, this may be worthy of special consideration. I want to address two specific subset populations where there has been concern about whether creatine supplementation is safe. These two subsets are women and people with pre-existing kidney diseases. As we look at women, there has been concern that certain hormonal shifts and changes in hormones in general uh, may help to uh, make creatine a less valuable supplement. But a review paper published by scientists at the University of North Carolina in 2021 looked at this specific topic and they said, quote, creatine supplementation may be even more effective for females by supporting a pro-energetic environment in the brain, end quote. They also said, quote, the current body of literature that has evaluated the effect of creatine supplementation in females suggests the risk to benefit ratio is low, end quote. Now, as we look specifically at kidney issues, this is something that I learned about in training that we maybe should worry about creatine supplementation in people with pre-existing renal slash kidney disease. Those mean the same thing. 
This has been uh, something that many people have discussed. Again, looking at a review paper, this one published in the Journal of Renal Nutrition in 2021, they looked at the available data in this review and they concluded, quote, we are of the opinion that creatine supplements are safe for young adults and patients with chronic renal diseases, end quote. They also said that we need to continue to investigate the effects of elderly patients and kidney issues combined as we look at creatine supplementation. So with all this backstory, if a person does choose to use creatine, let's do a quick disclaimer and talk about where they should get this. And that is, I would say this is a great thing to talk to your nutrition professional, your healthcare practitioner about because it can get confusing. And more importantly, everyone ideally is creating a nutritional plan, supplementation plan based on their personalized needs. What makes this confusing is that when you look at what's available on the market, you have creatine ethyl ester, creatine hydrochloride, buffered creatine, and the most popular creatine monohydrate. What I will say after looking at the research is that creatine monohydrate is the best studied form of creatine. It's also generally the most cost-effective form of creatine. When we look at dosing of creatine, generally around five grams of creatine monohydrate seems to be the consensus as it relates to the best research connecting it with brain health benefits. Um, as we look at timing, most of this data is in athletes, but it suggests that for performance benefit in athletes, it should be taken after exercise and with food. So with all of this said, how do we tie this together? Looking generally at the category of supplements and nutrients for brain health, there are very few where research suggests a benefit in healthy people from taking something that they wouldn't otherwise have received from their diet. Creatine, and in particular creatine monohydrate supplementation, has been correlated with better brain health outcomes. Now, is it a panacea? No, of course not. Is it going to fix every brain issue? No, of course not. Should you work with your healthcare practitioner as opposed to just assuming that any random product is going to be good for you? Yes, ideally you should. But as we look at something that has a lot of potential benefit, specifically in supporting brain energetics, I think creatine, and in particular creatine monohydrate, is incredibly interesting. Now, as a way of closing this out, if you haven't heard from me before, and if this is interesting information to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. It means so much to me, and it helps me to continue to create these videos. I'd love to hear your comments if you comment below, and I'll talk to you soon.